For a moment, I wondered whether the condition had found its way into Knut's genes via the Finns. Knut grew up in Norway as one of three colorblind siblings. His condition was defined as a disability, and he was put in the school for the blind. There I was treated as a blind person. I had to learn to read Braille. They had a regime that everyone there should sort of conform to being blind. And someone with residual vision, as I had, was sort of a pain in the neck because <laughs> I did all the wrong things there. Like, for instance, reading Braille with my eyes, which was certainly not allowed because the ray star passed shadows. And these shadows were much more easy to read by eye than by touch. So they put a big velvet mask over my eyes to force me to use my fingers. I ran away as a, some sort of protest. Next stop, Stenskata. Running away from the Institute for the Blind was probably a way for me to be recognized as a normal, as, a, as an ordinary person with, with, uh, and not something special. <laughs> Knut's childhood experience made him particularly sensitive to the situation of colorblind children on Pingalap. Seeing her with her eyes all the way down to the letters, exactly the way I did, trying to read when I was in school. I feel uh, sort of feel with her in a way. Uh, I mean, it's. It's the handicap you can, you must try to cope with, and and I think she's she's doing well. I mean, she's trying. Mimi. Mimi. Okay. If you two take this and look. I have the same eye disease as she has, and I'm, I carry this in my pocket. But it's very small, so it, it's she should have a larger one. At the bam. Silu. At the bam I taught myself properly to read using a magnifier like this. Issue. When I started school, the other children could see something that I could not see. They called it color. They referred to things by names which had no meaning for me. I would probably not admit to this and tried to use these names and sometimes I made very, very strange mistakes. Knut has long since taught himself the names of colors and makes sure he knows the colors of everyday objects. But there are still situations that confuse him. I couldn't distinguish these at all. The center here is slightly, of course, darker. Right. But the, 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 these, these parts completely um, blends with the green leaves of the tree. Yeah. It seems likely that color vision originated in this kind of context. One theory suggests that flowers evolved color to attract the insects that would pollinate them, whilst at the same time insects acquired color vision to guide them to the flowers. Later that day, I tested Knut on my socks, but he was wise to them by now. Um, do you like my socks? Oh, my God, yeah. Two very dark bands around down there, which I... This is a very dark band. Here it's sort of mid-gray, a dark, nearly black band, mid-gray, a black band, and very light, the, the toe part. Hello. Um, <laughs> yeah, they may not be kosher, but I adore them. 
and I would like to play with them. But the, um, the, the last time I did that, I was charged by, by the infuriated mother. Well, judging from how I usually see the, the very dark bands, I would say they were red. It, they could be blue, they could be green, they could be grey, actually. I wouldn't know. Um, with with uh, Dalton, who uh, described red-green colour blindness in himself in, in the 1780s, um, socks like this uh, became a problem because he was a Quaker and he went to the meeting house with what he thought was a sober black hose, but in fact it was vermilion and he was rebuked for his levity. John Dalton was the great chemist whom one more associates with Dalton's theory in atomic numbers, but he also gave almost the first, and certainly the first detailed formal description of, uh, of red-green colour blindness. Knut, who is an encyclopedia of arcane information, tells me that uh, Dalton uh, surmised that this might be due to some coloration of his own, uh, uh, of the media in his eye. He willed his eyes so that after his death they should take his eye out and quickly look through his eyes or through the lens of his eyes uh, the, uh, to see if it in fact was colored. Dalton's eyes still exist. I tracked them down later at the Royal Institution in London. I would have thought they were sort of shiitake mushroom, but I am. Um, but in fact, these are the remnants of Dalton's eye. They've survived really very well since 1844. His own idea was that there was within his eye a blue filter in the vitreous humour of his eye, which screened out the long wavelengths, the red part of the spectrum. The postmortem was carried out the day after. Dalton died and they looked at scarlet and green objects through it and saw that the colour wasn't distorted so the hypothesis of there being a blue filter inside the eye failed. In 1982 the technique which allows DNA to be amplified from very tiny samples was introduced and my colleagues have been able to recover DNA from one of these eyes and this leads to a great surprise. Everyone would have expected that what was missing from Dalton's uh, DNA was the gene that codes for the red sensitive pigment in the eye. What was actually missing was the middle wave gene, gene the gene that codes for the green sensitive pigment of the eye. And there's a moral to this finding. Uh, we shouldn't put color.